Thank you. Go ahead, Steve. Oh, hello. Rick, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah, thanks, Rick. I just want to uh, thank you for engaging sort of ordinary people in the community here. I think it's really great. My question is uh, sort of about funding the grassroots movement, you know, the people on Twitter here. Um, and so, you know, you've got sort of private benefactors like Tom DeLong and um, Bob Bigelow, uh, guys like that. What if somebody was to appear in the community with sort of substantial resources, what would you advise them to spend it on? Oh, wow. Um, well, uh, there's so many things that were, uh, were, were attempted uh, years ago, like Big, uh, Bigelow uh, and Nitz. Um, uh, he threw money out there to people um, millions and millions of dollars, and I don't think it was organized in the right way. Um, so um, I think I, I think that was wasted money. And there are a lot of things that can be done. Um, we need to create a a news venue that talks about this subject more. Um, I know it's it's discussed on spaces and podcasts and things like that, but uh, News Nation likes to get... Uh, I, I know people that have approached New, uh, News Nation with ideas, and they were all for it, but, of course, the thing about News Nation is uh, they're, ex very expens they're a very expensive news entity. They, they have to rely on, on money, and so... Uh, and people haven't come up with the type of money that they would need to facilitate some kind of open forum where we could bring uh, whistleblowers in. So <clears throat> that would be one way that the money could be spent. Um, uh, but News Nation was the only one that I know that covered the Vegas event, so I'm going to give them kudos for yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's who... Um, and I'm sure there's probably... Other people could think of other monies, types of monies that could could be uh, uh, how they could be used effectively. Thanks, Rick. So you're sort of saying focus more on communication rather than you know, like say uh, I know. So for example, have you heard of a guy called Charles? Hoss? He's an early cryptocurrency billionaire, and he threw some money at RV Low when he was going looking for debris in the oceans and things like that. So a guy like that popped up you would say go for communication rather than something like that, like funding, you know, giving it to Gary Nolan or giving it to Steve Bassett or Danny Sheehan with their lobbying efforts. You would go for... Because I, I sort of see it's like the, the government and the military contractors, they've got unlimited resources, but the real... It seems like the real action is here on Twitter. This is sort of... Well, it's at least a space that's very important, but... There are people here doing this voluntarily, sort of, just after work, you know, after their family. Do you have some money that you want to throw out there? Or do you know somebody who does? Because I can help direct you to where it would be well spent. Well, yeah, I do. I know people. There's, there's two communities that I've been interested in for 30 years, and they've sort of coalesced and combined here on Twitter. It's cryptocurrencies, digital assets, which has been around for 30, 40 years and the UAP thing, and both of them were sort of these obscure areas, and then both within about 60 days in, you know, November, December 2017, they both pumped out into the mainstream. And there's a lot of cross-up. All the UAP stuff seems to happen on Twitter, and all the crypto stuff happens on Twitter, and there's a lot of similarities in those two communities. So I think you can get a lot of resources. And... Can you help us raise some money? We want to, I want to make a movie. Can if, if the movie sounds right and we got the right players, would you be able to help us with that? Yes, yes. I think I know people and, you know, it would be more of just putting the two communities in, like, say, for example, Charles Hoskinson. I don't know him, but I know his journey. He started off as one of these guys who early cryptocurrency adopter and then 10 years later he's a billionaire and now he's throwing money around. So he's sort of like a Bob Bigelow guy. Uh, Brandon Fugel guy, and there's lots of those people around. So I don't think it would take too much effort 
to sort of get some funding and then say, rather than make, uh, you know, fund the grassroots, the people here, the people here are trying to do good work but don't have the resources to do it, to do it full time or if they're doing it full time, like say, like Lou Reviews with his, the great work he did, uh, if, if you hit a, if something goes uh, wrong, uh, you can sort of go from, oh, I can, I'm earning a bit of an income doing this, so I can do it full, full time to, oh no, now I'm sort of out in the yeah, Not to cut you off, Steve, because, but could you have a question for Rick? Because Lou and there's some other hands yeah, up we want to get to tonight. Rick answered it. It was sort of communication rather than spending it on more, you know, research type things, spend it on communication. So that, that was a great answer. Thanks, Rick. You're welcome. I think we'll go for another uh, maybe five questions. Okay. Uh, the lineup that I have thus far is the man in the shadows and then Mike and then Lou. And then Luis has come up here as has Mario, but your hands aren't up, so I'm unsure if you're wanting to ask a question. Yeah, but last chance to raise your hand. <laughs> the man in the shadows. Go ahead. I have a question for you, Rick. So you say that you know, obviously, I have some contacts in um, Congress. and. Are you all hearing the man in the shadows talking? Yeah, I hear him. Do you hear him, Rick? No, I don't hear anybody but you guys. I don't hear him either. Hey, the man in the shadows, just drop back. We'll, rec out. we'll recycle him, yeah. Bring yeah, up the I'll next. pull you back up, okay? Uh, so go ahead, Mike. Mike Disclosure, go ahead, man. Yeah, first off, I wanted to say hi, Rick. Good to see you, my friend. And <laughs> hi, Mike. Good to see you. I wanted to thank you again for helping me investigate the recent whistleblower, Jason Sands. You did an amazing job with that. Fantastic. And um, I, wanted, I wanted to say that when you close up shop here on the space, if you can, give me a, a quick call for a few minutes. I want to speak with you privately. Okay. All right. Will do. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. I just want to jump in real quick uh, and piggyback with my, Okay. So... Rick has become a friend of mine, but he, his his ability uh, to help me as a researcher save time and energy and direct and give me direction has been invaluable, and that's a tremendous asset. If you can find a friend like that, don't ever turn your back on him. Oh, I agree. Rick is a very good friend, personal friend of mine, and he does amazing work especially in regards to research. So you're right, Clint. Definitely a, Thank you. an invaluable resource. Thank you, Mike. And Eric. Okay, Lou, go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, man, I wanted to follow up with the question from last time, but I know... That probably won't go well. So you mentioned um, that your wife is a believer. Is that right? Mm, no, I didn't say that. I know she talked she, about my wife. Was maybe the only thing I said about my wife you was You were talking was about astrology. astrology. And said, oh, okay, yes, got it. Yes. How, is she into the UFO topic as much as you are? No. What does she think about um, your interest in the hobby? That's between her and I. <laughs> well, do, I, I mean, I'm just, I mean, like, does she, <laughs> does, does she, uh, does she, I got to meet, I got to meet Rick's wife. Yeah, you know, I can tell you the God's honest truth. Why don't you ask me and I'll tell you. Cause oh, I'm, you know, I'm, dude, I'm I can not. tell you this. She's a very nice lady. She's I'm, very concerned. I'm, I'm sure she's nice. I'm, not, I'm just wondering if there's, okay. if there's anything maybe that, I, I don't think you could answer this, Clint, but uh, is there anything that you've ever told her that maybe you haven't told the rest of us? When it comes regarding, in, in regards regarding to... Regarding the, the subject of UFOs? Yes. Or UFOs, and, UFOs? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Like what? <laughs> I, it's between her and I. I, well, you can tell her, right? So it's not unclassified. Can you just give us one? Well, wait a minute. My father has told me things. He re retired from Groom Lake, and my father has shared things with me that I promised I would never share until he passed away. So I personally would respect someone's private familial relationship. Okay. Thank you. Boring. <laughs> Thank you, 
I want to say, okay, Rick, I'm going to drop a bomb here. Don't, I hope it doesn't piss you off. Okay, but take this in fun, guys. It's a true story. I swear to God, it's true. So I meet Rick in, in uh, Laughlin, and we're going to go, and he allowed me to interview him for six hours about Paul Benowitz. We're giving me information that I don't know that he shared publicly yet. But anyway, but Thomas Whitmore has heard it. And when I met Rick and we're downstairs and we're talking about UFOs and whatnot, and she puts his arm, she puts her arm around Rick and she says, Rick's my alien. <laughs> Do you remember that, Rick? Oh, yeah. yeah I, remember that. I, I swear to God, she said, like, I almost started busting up. I didn't know you well enough, though. I just said, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I remember that. See where you I hope I didn't offend you by saying that. I just no. thought that was the coolest thing. Okay. No. No. Well, Rick, now you know if we say you're our alien, you'll you'll know what we mean. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> we mean it in an endearing way. That's right. Um I wanted to see if the man in the shadows was able to use his his mic again if he wanted to try it out. Are you there, man in the shadows? Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, Go perfect. Ahead. Can you hear him, Rick? Yeah, I can hear him. Rick, can you hear him? Yeah, I can hear him. Okay. Rick. All right, Rick. So I have one question for you. More like a, it's like a mixture of a question and a statement at the same time. So let me explain. If you need any more resources or any type of ability to push things along, I have connections as well to push the narrative. And that means by certain people and more than just DOD, Department of Defense, or any other stipulations, I do have people that have a high net worth that is over in the billion dollar mark. And they're in the same bracket and they're willing to push forward. Would you like okay. that? Sure, every bit helps. Yeah, sure. Uh, you, I, I left my... Uh email there on, on X if uh, you can just send me an email and definitely we can discuss will. it through the emails. Okay. Alrighty, yeah. sounds great. Awesome. That's Thank all I you. have to say. Okay, we could go to Louise and then uh, Rick, you want to round it off with our dear friend Nicole? Yes, that sounds great. Okay. Okay, Louise, go ahead. Thanks for waiting. Oh, thanks so much for letting me speak. Um, hi, Rick. I just have a question. So back in 2017, we know that WikiLeaks released some emails and Tom DeLong was um, chatting with people like um, uh, Neil McCasland, General Neil McCasland. Now, I was just wondering, have you met or spoken to Neil McCasland? We know he's a gatekeeper. And have you, um, yeah, uh, basically interacted with people on his level that know what he knows and do you think he'd ever come forward? Thank you. Uh, no, I never met the, never met the guy, but um, we, we within a working group, we have two uh, retired uh, DCIs, defective uh, d d directors of counterintelligence, uh, director of central intelligence and one director of the DIA. Uh, we had one in the, who was, a, uh, and also uh, NSA. So they are in the know and they have uh, um, good contacts. So, but no, I, I've never met uh, that general. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So we got two more hands, and then I want to make a final. You want to let Godhead throw his question out there, Nicole, and then you can take us away? Okay. Yeah, so I was abducted. Hey, I, <clears throat> I, I go by source. Um, I, I have two accounts. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, <sir>. okay, sorry. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> um, oh, my gosh, that just uh, nearly completely wiped my question out of my mind. Well, um, I was saying okay, was it had mailer. something. Okay, sorry, I apologize. Um Okay, so my brother is um, extremely well connected, uh, probably as much as you guys. He was trying to get me to talk to Alan Greenfield, so I, I was I'll talking to him, him and I was going to interview him like a year ago, uh, but I had a concussion. And they and, put it uh, in there. 
and then he kind of lost his temper with me because <laughs> um, it took me so long. But I'm, I'm ready to do some things like this now, and I'm wondering how I can get sort of into this uh, community because I'm, I'm, it's kind of the job I'm supposed to be doing to help my brother out. Well, uh, just uh, keep coming into the spaces, and um, um, I don't know what p specific type of help you, you want to provide to groups, but my email's in the uh, on X. I uh, just have to uh, send me an email, and if I can, I'll facilitate any kind of help or direct you in the right location. Okay. I appreciate that. Thanks, Rick. You're welcome. Nicole. Hi, everybody again. Thanks for, Nicole. Thanks for letting me back in the space after I got cycled down. I know I could ask questions forever, but I do want to give a shout out to my friend Louise. Um, she brought up a Tom DeLong adjacent question, which I just like to point out that she wrote the most fabulous song about Tom DeLong and disclosure. So you guys need to go to Luis's Twitter and scroll back a few months and find that song. It's the greatest uh, song about Tom DeLong I've ever heard in my life. And I've heard a couple, actually. So shout out to Luis. And Rick, thank you so much. Um, I know you and I are on this friend level to a point because, you know, I'm working on some books that may or may not be in films. And, of course, those are attached to, like, Grant Cameron, and he's been hounding you or hot on your trail for decades. So um, I do sometimes get it thrown in my way that I don't ever ask you hard questions. <laughs> so... In lieu of that, I would like to maybe ask you a tougher one. Um, and it does segue from how you kind of left a cliffhanger with me and Grant. So is that okay? Or is that something I should wing at you in a private space? <laughs> you can ask any question. I might not answer it. But I know. Ask I, that's yeah. always the risk with you. But in, in the space that you joined with me and Grant, Grant's first uh, Twitter space that he hosted, we were talking about parts of your career, and you brought up for the first time I had ever heard you mention, and you know I'm also speaking with him as a part of these upcoming books, but you said Ron Pandolfi was your boss. I was wondering if you would elaborate on that very quick comment that you made. Because to my knowledge, I know me and Grant, like, five minutes later when the space ended, we were like, what the heck did Rick just say? Did he say that? Like, But I don't think either one of us followed up with you yet. So can I follow well, up with you now? Well, well um, I should say that Ron was part of a group of people that was in charge of a particular operation. And um, I guess technically he would have been in charge of that operation. But I was just... CIA at that time, Rick. Yeah, yeah. He, I wasn't directly... I mean, he wasn't my uh, first-line supervisor. I'll put it that way. But, uh, you know, I meant to say... That, yeah, he was in charge of... of, of so, was this a multi-agency operation? Yeah, it was a multi-agency operation. Right, then that's, that's kind of the gist I had of it without, you know, because when you say a continent like that, it's not like I can turn around and go, Mr. Pandolfi, don't you just said you were his boss. Like, you yeah. know, that's just like so vague and, you know, out there, I'm like, so the boss of everything, huh? Like, you know, <laughs> I knew I had to clarify a little more before I could yeah, pursue yeah. my line of thoughts. But thank you so much, Rick. I appreciate yeah. it. You're welcome. And, and also, uh, footnote, just to stir it up a little more, that uh, there was some, a situation that occurred on Twitter a few months back that uh, caused Ron Pandolfi to send Rick some emails. <laughs> Remember that? Yes, yes. <laughs> that, was, I, that was interesting. I will not acknowledge knowing anything about those said emails or if I was CC'd on them. I shut him up after I sent some things back to him. Hey, Rick, do you want to take another question from Mario? And then Lou Reviews has his hand up as well. Just checking in with you. Yeah, I guess I can take one more. Yeah, no problem. I guess we can go up to what time is it now? 
uh, almost at the top of the hour. We gotta let Lou get it all out there, Rick. Just so you know, I promised Lou is, I would give him as many chances. Okay, Mario hasn't had a chance, so can we maybe go yeah. to Mario and yeah. give Lou his opportunity? Thank you. Go ahead, Mario. Mario, can you hear I us? I think I can okay, now. This are. is the first time I've ever done this. Rick, how are you? I'm good. Is this hey. the real? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. How you been? <laughs> good, good. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, a friend of mine told me this was on. Can you all hear Mario? I cannot hear him. I can hear him. I can hear him. Yeah, I hear okay. him. Okay, I'll just stay quiet. Some can, some can. Rick, I just wanted to ask you a question. We've spoken several times, and we were on that podcast together with Disclosure. And, uh, yes. That morning when, in 1977, in November, <clears throat> when I came into the commander's office, it was brought by my flight chief and my assistant flight chief. And uh, you were there, and Captain Jack Reed was there, your, your commanding officer at the time. I wanted to know if I could ask, how much information did you know of my situation and of the sighting that took place at November 5 that evening? Or do you know of it? Nothing. I knew of nothing. I wasn't briefed at all. All, all my job was at the time was to, to go to the hospital, the base hospital, and pick up yours and I think Johnson's yeah. uh, medical records. Uh, and, and bring him back to uh, OSI office. And I think I had to get the, um, I, get, I guess I had to get a PRP document that, that was on you too. Well, the reason I asked that is uh, when I was escorted or when I reported to Colonel Spraker that morning, if you remember, I had to knock on the door frame, the standard way of reporting, come in, salute him the whole nine yards, and you, Jack Reed, Captain Jack Reed, and I, did, I couldn't remember he was a captain until you told me, and there was another guy next to him in a suit that was taller. Then the assistant base commander was there, and, and that was that was Jack Green. That was Jack Green. He was a civilian. He wasn't a he wasn't military. He was a, a GS eleven or something. So what was he in a security type function or an investigative type function? No, no, he was OSI. He was OSI, he was but OSI. he was a GS rating. Okay, yeah, yeah, he was GS. Um, the reason I asked is because everybody in that room was waiting for me to, or and Michael Johnson to arrive, which Michael Johnson was taken over to the flight surgeon's office immediately. We, we were separated from November 5 as of that morning. I, I came in with my flight chief, Master Sergeant Gray, and Sergeant Hawkins took him immediately to the hospital. We used the Box Elder Gate uh, come into the SATAF building, but when we got there, as I said and reported in, you guys were already sitting to my left as I came in. And he had me stand there at parade rest for probably, what, 20 minutes, and the whole thing started before he allowed me to sit down to ask the remaining questions that he had, which were, which were quite long. I mean, it lasted a couple of hours. So before I ever was taken but in his staff car to the, to the flight surgeon's office, you and your officer or your captain and the man next to him were present during all that time. And I just wanted to know what thoughts you, you had, you know, concerning that whole incident, because it's never left me in 45 years. And I'm just so glad we can touch base, and we have in the last three years, uh, or in the last year, that is, although I've been, you know, emailing you and stuff for quite some time. But uh, I'm just glad we could touch base and discuss this, because I've never been able to discuss it with anybody. And the search goes on through Arrow for Michael Johnson. And I, we, yeah, I know. I, in fact, I, uh, I had been contacted by somebody from, uh, well, the DOG, BOD office on okay. there. But um, I, I was just, I was actually there, uh, TDY, on something entirely different yeah. with Jack. And and then I, and, and at the time, the OSI officer was short man, so uh, I was asked to do something. Now, I knew there was something happened in the missile field. What? I knew, I knew that. I mean, I knew that you guys were uh, with the uh, with the uh, uh, security police. Uh, in, uh, I think was it the missile security squad? Oh yeah, it yeah, yeah. It was it? Yeah, yeah, missile security. November yeah. five. Yeah, we were at number and, one LCF. Yeah, right. And, uh, but I knew, I knew it was something out there, but I didn't, I didn't know that that was UFO Canada. I didn't know anything about that. 
at the time. I was just a asked to do something, and I just happened to be in the office, and they said, hey, listen, I was a young whippersnapper, I mean, just really young OSI agent, and th they told me to do something, I did it. So that's that's all I knew. Now, I, I learned more later, but that was afterwards. Okay, because what was your rank at that particular at that time? Because I was a senior airman at that time, then promoted to an NCO in April, just a few months later. But I didn't. Hold on, Rick. I'm out of class. How, how old are you now? And you're, are you telling me that you physically saw Rick Doty there? Is that what you're saying? And Rick is acknowledging that? Absolutely, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you were there, and I was there. Facetiously, so <laughs> others like Lou can realize that Rick Doty actually did this work. So here's here's testimony right here live on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm 68. I'll be 69 in September. Born in 55. Rick, how old are you? About the same okay. age. I'm 70. You're 70. Okay. What was your What was your rank at that particular time? We were We were just OS agents. We We didn't have a rank. You just did. So you uh, were y'all. You enlisted? No. Were you You weren't. A, you were officer. No, I, was, I was an officer. I was oh. an officer. Okay. Officer. All right. Yeah, I just wasn't sure. So that's That's why I asked. But hey, Mario, let me ask you a question, Mario, please, because. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm sure you paid a lot of attention to a lot of things, and I'm sure you probably listened to Rick talk and maybe some of these spaces and other things. And what's your general, and be, I'm assuming you're going to be completely candid right now, what's your general impression of Rick and what he's trying to do and the message? Are you skeptical of Rick? Do you have any hard questions? I mean, you're a guy that was there, did that, had an experience. You're, you're an old timer. You've observed a lot of things. What's your take? That's what I want to know. You mean concerning just Rick Doty? How, what? I mean, yeah, what's your gut on what, on the things that he talks about and what he says and what he's trying to do now? Uh, he's lived his path. He's chosen his path and he's done well in his path in which he's on. Uh, I don't have any qualms with Rick in any way. And, and if I did, I wouldn't have, you know, asked him anything point blank concerning my particular briefing or debriefing that morning that he was there and present. It's been an ongoing uh, trek for all of us, in, in my opinion. And it's ongoing for him as well as it is I, myself. So you, you relate to the things he talks about because of your own personal experiences. So you, you see no reason to disbelieve him. Is that what you're saying? No, I would never, I would never say something like that about him. Why would I, why would I even venture in that, in that realm for? No. I mean, I worked for the United States Department of Energy for almost 14 years. So I've been to all these national laboratories, Sandia, Los Alamos, Oak Ridge, Oak Ridge National Laboratory, uh, General Electric Neutron Devices. I've seen tests of elements in the 450 Lawrence area Livermore. in Los Alamos. Excuse me? I said Lawrence Livermore. I was just, I had to throw oh. in that lab. Like, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that's yeah. my star body lab. <laughs> Well, Mario, okay. thank, uh, thank you very much, Mario. I think that was very. Uh, Thanks, uh, Mario. We got, but we still got Lou reviews. We're going to get. We got to give Lou reviews the last shot, if that's okay, Rick. One more shot from Lou reviews. I'll keep it real quick. Um, I only have a suggestion for everyone in this room listening, and that is simply quit treating Rick Doty with kit gloves. He's a big boy. He can answer questions on his own, and don't be afraid to ask Rick hard questions. And when he gives you answers where he gets super frustrated, I think that speaks volumes. <laughs> um, oh, Lou, and, Lou and, let me chime in real quick. Uh, I don't want to cut you off, but you and you are having a little, like, word I'm share about, back and I'm, forth, though. Hold on, hold on. Nick, Nicole, that's the floor now, no, Lou. You, I, I, was you every, I'm a, I was about to say. All right, well, listen. Vinny, Vinny, take control of it. No, I want Lou to finish, and then I want to rebuttal. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm about to get out of here. Clint, if you want to have a discussion about the answers that we got today later in a different space, not today, obviously, but some sometime later down the road, I would love to go over the answers that we got today from Rick Doty. And Nicole, love you to death. But there's I know, we'll in hash it out too. There's, like, there's it all goes on the timeline. Let me finish, girl. There's nothing in your book that is going to reveal anything that is going to get us closer to any sort of truth. Have a great weekend, guys. 
Oh, Louie, don't leave yet. Let me ask okay, you. Like, I'll listen. Like, I mean, I know maybe you and I have different definitions of what a tough question is. But, I mean, that last question I asked, Rick, that, that took, like, seven years for that mm -hmm. to even be able to unfold. And then, so, like, the question you asked tonight is, like, who he thinks is most ridiculous in ufology? Uh, no, I mean, Nicole, I just think no, we have Nicole, a difference you, you of what Nicole, a tough you question missed, is. Nicole, you and I know you part. haven't read Grant's books. I know you haven't read Grant's books. So the ones that I am continuing book two and book three are a continuation of three books that Grant's already written before. Right. And to my knowledge, he has never written one that says, this is Rick Doty. So, of course, the books to come aren't just about Rick. So there's more to this than just Rick. And Okay, yeah. And so then, I don't ask him kit glove questions. I think he knows that. And I okay. think that's why we have a good repertoire. <laughs> hey, I, okay, Lou, you're, you're going to get dropped, Lou. I just want you to know, so don't take part of it. Okay, well, that's the way it. it always goes and that, here. Lou, and no, it is I because, Lou, Lou you are the only guy. Lou is the smartest guy in the room, and that's where you kind of blow your whole cover, Lou, is you are not well, the smartest guy in the room. Hey, you guys, want everyone Lou, to just think how that. I stick yeah. up for Rick, I stick up for Lou Jimenez, too, though. Like, he and I are cool. We talk about a lot but of things. But he is not he the smartest guy in the so, room. I'm not trying, no, I'm let, not let, trying let, to be the smartest guy. Let me say something. Lou, Lou, it's my impression that you are a disinformation person that's planted in these rooms. You disinform, you don't, oh, you're not approaching anything with an open mind. All you want to do is argue and distort facts and call people liars. So that's my impression of you, that you are, in fact, a disinformation person in this room. Okay, well, what, 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 Nicole, now. hold on a second, Nicole, I'd like to address that. I would love for anyone here, here's my full name, Luis Victor Jimenez. Anyone could go find out right now if I'm a disinformation agent, like a claim that you just fucking made right now. So now you've just weaponized all the people in this room to come after me. Well, now you guys have my full name, so go for it. And find out what department within the government I work for. Because Ricky Tiki just put a fucking label on me like that. Hey, this is... Well, you put a label on me. <laughs> so, so uh, I can put one on you. Okay, let's let's go. Let's who who yeah, is let's, the last let, one? Let's go ahead and put Lou in, 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 in the just, timeout box. I'll end on something nice and just say that I I am in the middle of a lot of this a lot of times between who likes people and who doesn't like people and who wants to get along and who I should talk to and who I shouldn't. And there is a big part of me that understands where Lou Jimenez is coming from, and from my point of view, like. Some of that gets taken out on people like Rick because it was people like Lou Elizondo and company. And I can just say that because I've shared some of the same frustrations that has Lou Jimenez the way he is right now, like looking at ufology this way. So it's not an excuse for anybody's behavior. I'm in the middle a lot, and I seem to be able to get along and have respect for a lot of people across all their feelings. So that's what I try to bring to these spaces, and I know Rick has always been more than willing to speak with me, and so has Lou. So I just wish that maybe the two of you or just everybody could learn how to come at each other in a better way to achieve the same kind of results that they want to have with asking these questions. Because some of them aren't easy, and they are hard. So thanks, everybody. This was a great space overall. It doesn't need to be all poopy at the end. <laughs> go yeah, go yeah, listen exactly. to Louise's song about Tom DeLong. It's like, you it's wanna, awesome. It <laughs> well, no, no, no. There's another Tom DeLong song I haven't hey. actually recorded yet. <laughs> hey, you guys. Oh. Uh, hey, Lynn has her hand up. Sorry to mute everyone, but I wanted to give her a chance to speak as well. Go ahead, Lynn. Hi, thank you very much. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can awesome. hear you. Uh, so that was really fascinating to come into a space and to um, to hear that uh, exchange 
with with Rick Doty, Mr. Rick Doty and uh, Mario Woods. That was, I think, entirely authentic. I hadn't heard much about this event that seemingly happened perhaps around November 1976 or 1977. And I just want to commend, uh, commend you, Rick. I think, I think there's probably a lot of unfounded claims against you <laughs> online that you are, are probably levied against you. And um, I thought the way you handled that was really cool. And that was a, that was a really fun listen to hear that exchange between you and someone that you had worked with. Uh, my question is, with that event in particular, um, is more information going to come out about that event? Or is that just kind of a, just more of a natural kind of happenstance that came up tonight? Thank you very much. Well, Rick, you should remind, well, no, Mario, you should uh, remind everybody that you did a special episode with Mario on Disclosure tonight for over two hours and discussed all of these things. They could rewatch it easily on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, you can, you can, I was just going to say that I did, I did, I, we talked at least two hours uh, about the incident, what I knew about it. I didn't, I wasn't intimately involved in the investigation of that. There were other OSI agents uh, that, that did that. All I did was uh, uh, help the, the uh, agents investigating it get some records. When, well, all I'm going to say is that uh, every security policeman or anybody that deals with nuclear weapons guards them, and that's what Mario was doing, was guarding Minuteman three missiles at a missile site in uh, South Dakota, uh, are, are under what they call a personal reliability program. And that means that they have to be uh, psychologically stable in order to guard nuclear weapons and um, that was one of the forms I had to get from the hospital so uh, but but yeah you know, everything Mario says is factual there's there's nothing uh, out of the ordinary again I wasn't uh, intimately involved in it so there's a lot that I don't know that he knows uh, and, and the other agents uh, unfortunately uh, I think all the other agents are dead, uh, but me. So, um, but 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 Mario's speaking the speaking fact. Well, okay, so you're. Let me just confirm. So, what Mario says, as far as you're concerned, without knowing the facts firsthand, you see no reason to disbelieve his story. No, no, he he did. Uh, it, there was something that happened in missile field involving uh, UFO and. Uh, yeah, again, I don't have the full knowledge of that because that's probably still classified. And I only know what I did and what other agents told me to do and the little briefing I did get regarding the incident. But the Mario's the one that, you, that needs to explain everything about it. Yeah. I just want to say right. it, I, found, I found the interview on Mike's page and I've put it down in the trouble. So that's the little bubble, the chat bubble on the right-hand side if anybody wants to watch it. Thanks. Hey, Mario. Well, we let Mario finish it off, and that'll be the very last one, Rick, because I really would like to hear more from Mario, if that's okay with you. Sounds good. Yeah, great. Hello again. <laughs> wow. Didn't mean to stir up a bunch of bunch of mess. Are you there? Or can anybody hear me? Or? No, I can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Well, I, I'm uh, out here putting up a doorbell, so that's why I was kind of uh, offline for just a moment. But uh, I just wanted to say, you know, I appreciate what Rick has done. And uh, it, it took so long to make contact with someone that was there. We still cannot locate Michael Johnson, and I'm not the only one looking for him. I've been looking for him for, really, since I bought my first computer back in 1992 or 93. Uh, every platform that I can possibly get on, together we served, or anything else, I always try to, we're always trying to find him. People have been paid to look for him. Arrow is actively seeking him as also. So that's all I can do is wait for for one of those people to do that. However, I did get something in the, on an email the day before yesterday, uh, and it was an individual whose father uh, was a state trooper, and literally, uh, I can send the email or post it wherever, uh, but his father told him on his dying deathbed not long ago that when his son asked him about the two missing airmen uh, on that missile site near Newell, South Dakota, where this happened, he said, yes, I was there. He saw something in the air. He didn't say what it was, but he said that did happen. 
Additionally, there were state guys looking for us, too, from Sturgis, South Dakota, which is south by 39 miles. So we had a total of 11 people searching for us, five hours of missing time, and discovered behind the New Lake Reservoir Dam. Burns on my face. I don't know the burns that Michael Johnson had. Burns on the back of my right hand. We were at that point separated after taken back to the launch control facility and then transported back to the base after about a two and a half hour interrogation per se. And then separated. I never saw him again for 18 days, of which he came to my apartment in Rapid City and that was the last time I saw him. We drew pictures and drawings and even the woman I was married to at the time just couldn't believe what was going on because I couldn't even tell her. Uh, but at that, hey Mario, real quick, that point, uh, you found out. I don't want to assume. Yeah. Any, I don't want to assume anything, Mario. But your experience that you had, uh, if the, ten being it was full on non human, one being you know totally human, where would you rate that experience? Twenty five. All right, so there's yeah. no doubt no. in your mind. No, no, listen, my follow up would just, be this. Go ahead. <laughs> this craft. I want to tell you something. If you've ever seen, have you ever seen a real aircraft carrier in your life, full on, in, in a port? Have you ever seen an aircraft carrier? Oh, yes. Okay. We'll I put have. two of those together side by side and lengthwise and turn them into a sphere and put it 10 feet off the ground, sitting on top of a blast door at November 5, Minuteman 2 missile site, and pulling up to that at 1 o'clock in the morning. And at the same time, air, light, vacuum, or whatever hit us was completely disabling and disorienting to any part of any human recognition that I may have had in me or Michael Johnson had in him. He was frozen to a steering wheel that it took two of us to pull him off of it four hours later, five hours later. A Sergeant Garza helped do that behind the New Lake Reservoir Dam. That object was so bright and so full of energy that I don't know if we put all of our nuclear weapons together at one time and detonated them, if that would even add up to the power that that thing ex that just exuberated. It was unbelievable. Uh, all of a sudden... How, how long approximately did you get to observe that? Like like a minute, two minutes, 30 seconds? How long did you actually look at that thing? Probably five minutes, eight minutes before I was out. Or before... That's a long yeah. time. Tell me about it. Never got out of my vehicle. Never thought about shooting it. Didn't know if I was going to mess myself. Couldn't run. Just, you're completely disabled as a human being. It's just so overwhelming to come into contact with something that is so much farther advanced technologically and every other kind of way to you as a human being. There's no way I can relate that to anybody. You have to feel it for yourself. Close up and full on. The heat from it, the rays from it, dust particles coming out of vents at a dashboard on an F-150 truck just glistening right by my eyes as if in another time, as in, a, as in, in slow motion. My partner's so frozen and so locked up, a real light-skinned black guy, it, breathing, looking forward, and just locked in a position like a human trance or something, or comatose, or I don't know, how, how do you say that? But what you said earlier, I heard PRP mention, Personal Reliability Program. I told... In that office where Rick was that morning, everything that happened on that missile site that night, with the exception of what I saw out that right window, that F-54 pickup truck. And that were three small beings, grays, and one tall behind them. And in that, the small beings waistband, or whatever you want to call it, a belt, they didn't seem to be walking, they were gliding, was a wand of some type. That's, it drew my attention to it because it had a glowing tip. The one behind him the big one, he had something on his chest. Everything went dark from that moment. The next time I opened my eyes, I was in complete darkness, not knowing where we are. A white wall next to, right next to the vehicle, about 10 feet away to my right. Complete darkness compared to an unbelievable sun rising on top of a missile site. That wall happened to be the backside of the New Lake Reservoir Dam. So if he did a Google map search on these three locations, November 1, November 5, to, to New Lake Reservoir Dam, which I'd never been there before. It was by mistake I even got to go there in 21 when Discovery Plus had us out there, or had me out there. That's 21 and a half miles. Where that vehicle was sitting, 
I got out in mud and the temperature was between 9 and 13 degrees that morning. Michael Johnson still frozen to a steering wheel. The only way we could have even gotten out of there was the way in which that vehicle was sitting where it was. We ran over two foot of snow. We only had two wheel drive vehicles and when we were found, a Sergeant Garza approached from about 40 feet away. As I tried to speak to him, I said, I need help with Michael Johnson. He said, I'm not allowed to talk about it. Because he still wasn't speaking. He wasn't doing anything. He was comatose. So I don't even know how to explain that. But I never relayed what I saw at that window because of that personal reliability program. I'd have been out of a job and put out of the service and probably on a medical. And I would have never gone to work for the United States Department of Energy as a security inspector, ultimate security inspector, <laughs> with the Department of Energy facilities as a protection officer. So I did that for 14 years until I... Is it true, uh, Mario, that a lot of the information is, they call, they will use the word hidden in, in that DOE because of their ability to keep it on the down low? No, not at all. I signed a non-disclosure agreement that day. and Rick, you were there when I signed that because that Jack, Captain Jack Reed, he had the paperwork. He laid it on Colonel Spraker's desk that I looked it over and signed it. That was prior to him sending me over to the conference room right next to his office and chair right there where I spent the next hour and a half writing that on like a report form with a skill craft pen which is three copies you know how to you know how they used to do that Rick with the carbon copy yeah. right well there were three yeah. pages of that report you know that I, I wrote everything that I just stated with the exception of what I saw out the right window I said no more you know skin samples were taken from my upper right eye area in the back of my hand. Band-aids were placed on me, and I should have been in the field for four days. This was just the simple first day. We just got there that morning. I just worked with Michael Johnson that day. He came out for vacation relief from the 66th area down toward the Badlands, because there's, you know, 15 launch control facilities and 150 men at men to make nuclear missiles on that site, which are now decommissioned. So... Mario, let yeah. me ask you a quick question. Based on the people you've talked to and your own experience, if you were going to, your best guess, how many other experiences similar to what you experienced have happened in the United States? Uh, I'd probably say three or four, just, just from what I know. That doesn't count overseas. I have friends overseas also that I've come into contact with. It's amazing how this thing blossoms, you know. It's just not... It's just not all about me. It's just, it's going on. And there's many people that don't know that it's going on. And they, perhaps that's the curiosity that we all have. Well, well one of the, uh, another uh, uh, bit of information you need to pass everybody away is there was a second incident that happened at Ellsworth Air Force yes. Base. Uh, not, not just Mario, but there was a second incident that happened there. So uh, there were two within the same year. In the 66 area, too. That was down toward the Badlands. Right. Yep. Right. Uh, and there was one just a year before, and that's when a really large craft uh, posed itself at the south end of our runway on base at Ellsworth, where they, you know, have uploaded B-52 bombers because they have a aircraft wing also, not just a missile wing. And that was the year before. Yeah, Mario, one more quick question. So Rick has shared with us information that he believes is authentic, that the DIA uh, recognized five different types of beings during his time in. Do you see any reason not to believe that there might have been five beings at minimum that have visited us here on Earth or that are here now? Well, I, I totally recognize those five that he's talking about, and I've been told, and I think there's about nine of them, to be honest with you. Just me speaking, nobody else. You know, if the DIA, Great. If the DIA has been tracking these just like... Can I ask if you guys, because I've seen this, and so has my brother, the people frozen on the wheel... Have you heard anything about um, Northeast Mississippi regarding this or any incidents um, about the year 2000, 2002, somewhere in there? Was that, was that a guy by the name of Hendricks? Just, just, Justin Hendricks? Was that who you're talking about? Uh, my brother is uh, P.D. Newman. He's a, a 
Freemasonry author, psychedelic oh. author. Yeah, I'm unpublished, but I'd, I've written a few things, but I'm not satisfied with them yet. <clears throat> but we've both witnessed um, some some of the same stuff, you know, where individuals um, on both sides of the road pulled over and uh, all the call, cars were stopped and all the people had their hands on the wheels and just looking straight ahead, eyes open, breathing. It was the most eerie thing. And um, we've all got some lost time during that incident. And sorry, the rain just started. So, yeah. That sounds great. I, I need to ask a question, though. There's so many people in this room. I, uh, I have some, I have some, uh, some, some pretty good connections throughout this, throughout this whole thing. And uh, I'm just going to call it that because I don't want to single any particular person out or, or thing, per se. But I have been told that study through DARPA, there is a way through the hippocampus part of the brain that there is a portion in there somewhere or some type of a nerve bunch that can be electrically stimulated and literally turn a human being off. I don't know what anybody else has heard about that, but that uh, really got my attention when that was stated, and they, and they said they've done it. So uh, I, 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 I just find that uh, totally believable. I, I believe that these these beings have more knowledge about us than we've ever thought about having concerning ourselves, scientifically and every other kind of way. I would love to train with that and get to where I could shake it off and disregard the effect. Mm. I can only imagine. Actually, Rick, uh, I think Peter can answer Mario's question directly. Uh, yeah, hey, Mario. Uh, good talk to hey. you again. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, by the way, if anyone's interested, we did about, a, I think it was probably a two and a half hour interview with Mario and oh. Rick on that episode of Disclosure Tonight, and Excellent. we got into some really good details. Uh, it's a really good interview from both of them. We got into some really good details that you really don't find anywhere else uh, on the internet that I know of. So if you're interested in that case, that would definitely be a good place to uh, look for some details. But yeah, Mario, uh, that's... Um, yeah, what, what you're onto there is, is true there. You've got your amygdala, uh, which is often in the motion processing center. And Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. Center. Yeah, and if you, uh, if you stimulate that, then you can get it so you're not, uh, not forming a lot of memories at that time. So you may not consciously recall uh, the episodes that you're, uh, that you're observing. So it, it's one thing to go through things. It's another thing to remember it. And it's like when people get concussions, they often don't remember uh, several minutes that they're up walking around afterwards, but they process normally, but they just don't recall that. So it's absolutely correct what you're saying, that your brain could be stimulated to not remember those events. Could, uh, could there be seepages in that where perhaps you, you know, in a dream state you may see parts of those things that, that possibly occurred when you were shut off, per se? What do you think? Uh, yeah, you know, that's that's a possibility because uh, the events are recorded in different areas of your brain. And, you know, usually when you enter certain dream states, um, different areas of your brain uh, start coordinating together and areas that normally coordinate together stop coordinating according together so they act more independently so that's kind of where you're going in and out of your dream cycles and your REM sleep cycles is when those when the different areas of your brain uh, start and stop coordinating together and you know th there's a lot of um, ideas on why that happens and some of it is to process information that you've uh, experienced during the day that day so that you can sort through it and record that as long-term memories. So it's okay. conceivable that you might be able to remember uh, some of that, uh, even though you don't consciously remember that, because you're also recording these events in your endocrine system and emotionally too. So you may have some emotional feedback where that was actually a heightened response, and then that may be playing back, and then your brain can reinterpret that emotional response and whether that's accurate to what you actually saw then or not is probably, you know, that's a question, but uh, it doesn't mean it isn't either. So uh, that is that's uh, definitely a Peter, 
Not to be rude, but we're, we're trying to wrap this up. Go ahead, Mario, yeah. and then we've got a few yes. hands. I know Rick's been giving us like 30 minutes of overtime. Mario, <laughs> go, I, go, Mario, go. First, the first thing I want to say is, is, one, thank you, Rick Doty, for standing up and acknowledging that you were there that day, you know, whatever you had to do there and pick up my medical records and everything. I only know, uh, you may imagine this, you live with something like this all your life. I was 23 years old the time that it happened. And uh, you question yourself all along, you know, uh, all your life. What you know? I know what I saw. I know what I felt. I know what happened. Uh, uh, minus five hours of what took place, I don't know. But for you to stand up and to help me and to say that yes, I remember you as well as I remembered you. I I saw you on Ancient Aliens. That's where I first saw. I said, Wait a minute, I know that guy, and that's where it all came from. And from that point, I was trying to make contact with you. But you're the only one I've gotten so far in my whole incident. Master Sergeant Gray's gone. Sergeant Hawkins is gone. Can't find Michael Johnson. Anoka Spraker, he's gone. He was in his 40s or 50s then, you know. So I don't know how else to proceed other than the way in which I'm doing, you know. And I only tell exactly what I know. I've, I've never embellished any portion of it in any way. But I did take a slow motion picture of everything that I saw because that's the way it was shown to me that night. I was hanging out of the window seal on an F-154 pickup truck flashing a black aluminum flashlight at this thing the same way I had done at the launch control facility when I saw it to my east earlier, three hours earlier. How that happened, I don't know. But I do know this. When I flashed that flashlight at that big, huge electrically charged craft that was big as a Walmart building. As soon as I slid back down on that seat and put my M16 between my legs, and I've got on a full parka, flat pants, bunny boots, everything, and a beret on my head, that I could breathe again. And I told, turned to Michael Johnson, who's still stuck on that wheel, and I said, it's going to be okay. We can breathe now. That's exactly what happened. The, the, the pressure was released. I don't know if it's through that flashlight communication, something so simple. But these beings, their technology is something that we don't, we can't even wrap our heads around. And I know I saw what I saw, and I know how I felt sitting there on that windowsill of that truck as a full-grown, fully armed security policeman in the United States Air Force. There was nothing that could stop me but these guys, or whatever you want to call them. But I just thank you, Rick, for stepping up and sending me that email and being there for me, with me. Well, if Thank you remember, you. Mario, Please, I reached Thank out you. to you. Yeah. And I put you together with Rick so that you could have that conversation. Because we talked about it privately. And I remember you were trying to have a conversation with Rick. And I told you that I could make that happen and put you and him on the show together. So after 45 years, you would be able to discuss well, and go over this. We and did exactly pleasure. that, too. We, we did. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was my pleasure. And uh, I'm glad you and Rick had a chance to continue to speak about this. And I believe we'll be able to continue the conversation. Um, so I'm glad that well, we you sure and Rick should. were able to do that. Yeah, we will. It's an um, important I, thing. I just want to say what, real quick is that this is what teamwork's all about, in my opinion. I mean, you put your ego aside, you have one goal, is to get the truth out there. One guy helps another guy. I try to get Rick on Twitter. We're all working together, and most of us aren't getting paid a dime for this. Oh, I can tell you not one penny. You're, you're absolutely right, Clay. And Rick, your co-host, I sent her a DM with the actual link to the episode with you and Mario on Disclosure Tonight. She could take the current one down okay. and put the one I sent her up, which is the right one. So people okay. can follow it Great. and see it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody. I think we're going to end it now. Uh, I appreciate everybody's questions and um, patience, uh, even Lou's. Um, but, um, <laughs> you know, I have, to, I have to say what I want to say. Uh, he said what he wanted to say, and I get a right to say what I want to say. 